Hi, my name is Leslie and this is my daughter Mallory. Mallory was born in 1987, making her debut into the world. Debut into the world. 30 years old. And Mallory was diagnosed with Asperger's and PDD. NOS. NOS. Per pervasive, pervasive development development disability. Well, no, pervasive no. developmental delay non otherwise specified. Thank you. It's easier for you to say. So anyway, what we hope to do here is to share our experiences with you since we've been on this journey together for 30 years. The rate of autism, which is going to be a hot topic we're going to be addressing in other videos as well, because when Mallory is diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, nobody ever said it was autism spectrum disorder. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here. But anyway, we would like, now that they've lumped it all together, where if you are an Aspie, you are now considered to be autistic or on the autistic spectrum. So we want to share our 30-year <laughs> journey with you in the hopes of being able to help anybody who's out there struggling right now and trying to understand their child and trying to figure out where to go. And I will preface it by saying that when you were born in 1987, mm -hmm. you know, the rate was something like one in 10,000. Mm -hmm. And now it's in New Jersey, it's like one in um, 45. 45, a little bit higher if you're a boy. So uh, for whatever reason, this has gone kind of cuckoo since um, you were born. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there are many, many services now for the young ones, but there's nothing for my Mallory and anybody like my Mallory. So, um, so anyway, we just want to we just want to kind of be a, a resource for you all and um, share ideas, share resources. See if you guys don't have some ideas yourself for us, and vice versa, because we're kind of all in this together and um, a little bit of uncharted waters for the elders. Elder. You're an elder, <laughs> for the elder, okay. elder Aspies. So, uh, so anyway, why don't why don't you begin by um, saying what you hope to accomplish? Well, similar to what you were saying, just I think through sharing our story, our stories, because we have a point of view of mind, that we're also be spreading awareness. Right, and one of our other goals is to also bring to light. The I'm um, the NT, the neurotypical. Well, you're an you're, extreme neurotypical. Yeah, I know. I've been actually called an extreme neurotypical. Um, highly sensitive person. But anyway, so what we wanted to kind of do is, you know, in given situations, say, well, from the NT point of view, this is what I saw going on. And from Mallory's point of view, what mm -hmm. it felt like, uh, you know, through the Aspie eyes. And um, also to just let you know that we are kind of unique in that... I have a onesie. <laughs> she has a onesie. <laughs> in that she's... You're, but you're, you are very perceptive. Like, mm -hmm. it's been said that uh, people with Asperger's are... Um, aloof. Aloof, that they don't read body language or cues, which... I don't read body language. I read people's souls. Yeah, see, she's very perceptive. She's got she's got her own unique gifts, <clears throat> and she is very very deep and perceptive and understands. But you also are the perfect one to bridge the gap, because you do have the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes, and you have the ability to say, okay, I can see why they reacted in this manner. Yeah. But you know, I wear both hats. You kind of do. So I kind of think she's the perfect person to be the spokesperson for bridging the gap and helping us all understand because this world is changing and I think it's going more Aspie myself with everybody on their devices all the time. People are not communicating face to face verbally anymore. <clears throat> Everyone's looking down at their cell phones. There's no eye contact going on. And people's millennials, seems like their preferred method of communication is is always email text i am i am <laughs> whatever so um <laughs> you mean it's a message that's what i meant to say yes so anyway i think that the world is going in that direction anyway which uh believe it or not helps level the playing field for people that do have <laughs> asperger's or but social um, anxiety yeah or just social deficits or whatever mm -hmm. i mean if you're never talking and communicating like how do you develop that you know, like we're not, we're not all like it's all just too tech technologically geared this world today. 
So anyway, we just hope to bring a better understanding <laughs> between the NT world and the ASPE world and weigh in on um, specifically your thoughts about being labeled a spectrum disorder or ASD. Well, I don't, I don't follow or conform to that. Right, but tell me how, how you felt when, tell me how you felt when you found out you had Asperger's and how old were you? How did I, I, well I was 17, but I don't remember how I felt because there was just so much going on at the time that I couldn't specifically pinpoint any emotion to the, the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Okay, then fa But now I can say what I think of it all. Well, what do you think of it all now? Well, um... Like, I get very angry. Why? Because I'm not living... A, I'm not living a life. And why do you think you're not living a life? What's stopping Because we you? live in a state that doesn't allow me to have one. Okay, but be more, be more specific. When you say have a life, so you're 30 years old. Yes. You graduated from high school. Yes. Went through mainstream, regular old Yeah, the regular school. public high school. And then you tried your hand at community college. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Well, I mean, I had a... I mean, I got ill, if you will, so mm -hmm. that, that put things to a screeching halt, but still trying to just pick up the pieces in general, there's, there's, there's nothing. Okay, so you, what you're saying is you haven't found um, it to be possible to go out and have a job, a career, or finish your degree. Mm -hmm. And you gotta explain to people, well, well why is that? Because there's no supports or services. And what would you like to see in the way of supports and services? Like what, what do you feel you need in order to be successful and um, live your dreams? Um, support groups? For? Ten in. Zero in on But the everyone civics. knows what it is. It's Asperger's. But I don't think they do. So that's why we're going to edumacate. <laughs> edumacate people as to um, what, you know, where the deficits are so we can fix them and make it better. I mean, I know and you know, but do they know? Hopefully they know and they don't. It's a rude awakening. <laughs> don't Google it. How is that informative? I don't say Google it. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. You know, if our whole premise here is to help people understand, then we have to fill in the little details. Yes, and there's no group to help me to know to do that. Okay, bing, 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 we have a winner. I think what we're getting at here, just trying to, trying to uh, have an example, is when... This is scrambled eggs up in here. Whatever's here does not come fluently out of here. Okay, that's important to know. And what, what, what scrambled eggs up here not coming fluently out here is actually the, the, the technical term for that is executive functioning. And that's part of the big problem, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what else? So we have executive functioning because you got all kinds of wonderful gifts, talents, and ideas up here. Yeah. But getting them execute it even just like formatted in a way that comes out of your mouth yeah so that somebody could then help you yeah like a uh, a helper okay so i think what we just identified is by me saying to you be more specific and you're looking at me like why are you torturing me yeah <laughs> is, is to show that that's the problem executive functioning and when you go and you hear People talk about executive functioning, you know, they'll say that, that that is very common with people with ADD, ADHD, because I have it too. And um, you kind of think, well, that just means you don't know how to organize your day, you don't know how to make your to-do list, you don't know how to execute your to-do list, 
or you can make it, but you don't know where to start. But it's way where more you start, than. But you don't finish. Yeah, all that. Good Lord, I got that in spades. But anyway, what I, I when I attended a wonderful lecture on this, I actually learned a little bit more that it's not just that, but it's literally organizing these thoughts that are rambling around up there in the brain and, and being frustrated to be able to actually articulate. So it's also related to speech, not just writing a to-do yeah, list. Like but what are words? <laughs> what are words? So Mallory is like frustrated right out of the box because yes. you can't even really tell me or tell someone else yeah. what it is that you're trying to do and what you want and then you it just makes you very frustrated. Well, it takes so long to get there that people are like, come on, and it's like, I can't. <laughs> okay, so then... Well, then... we could have done without all that information. Why just give the important part? This is so true. This is so true. She can give you like an hour of extraneous details that are not even relevant <laughs> or necessary for the thing, like, but like, then like, the major thing, like, she'll like, leave out. Like, like, like when I learned about Martin Luther King. <laughs> well, you were just a little girl, all excited, came home from school. But you wanted to know specifically about yeah. So I said, what about, she's like, oh, I learned all about Martin Luther King today. And I said, that's great. What did but I was so focused on Rosa Parks. Yeah, I said, so, so she talked all about Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks this, Rosa Parks that. And I said, that's great. But getting back to who is Martin Luther King, who is Martin Luther King? And she said, oh, he drove the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what's really important here is if you can't separate out like the really important details, the stuff you really, really need to know, and it kind of really becomes a problem with I'm, independent living I'm and a queen of assumption. safety out there in the world. Because you could tell me <clears throat> like for 13 minutes about how your sandwich got wrecked because you burned the toast, but the big headline is really the kitchen's on fire. Yeah. And you'll leave that part out because you'll be hyper-focused on how your sandwich got destroyed and now what are you going to eat, but meanwhile... I also want you to call the fire department 13 like, minutes like, ago. Like, um, I'm the good doctor with his apple. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's a really good TV show, The Good Doctor, which really has um, intrigued us, right? Mm -hmm. But I mentioned I have ADD, and I think you've figured it out by now. We are so off topic, but that's okay, right? That's, that's what we do. That's yeah. how we roll. Um, so anyway, I think we were trying to get to the point of the story as to what you need and what you'd like to see out there in the world in the way of supports. And basically, um, a coach. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Excuse me one second. I have a cold and I ain't gonna sneeze. A chewy. Also, it's like really like a frozen tundra outside. Oh my god, I thought I had the box of tissues near me. I am so sorry. Um, out of reach. So, anyway. What Mallory, I think, is um, getting at is that there aren't supports in place for kids after they graduate from high school. When you're young, and if you were <clears throat> diagnosed at a young age, they have gazillions of um, early intervention programs mm -hmm. now. But you were born in the dinosaur dark age before anyone really knew. And when you mentioned being diagnosed at 17, it was not for lack of trying. We tried endlessly to figure out what was it that was making life so hard for you. Because your anxiety disorder was woohoo off the charts. This is the point where I now wear a, wear a device that tells me when to breathe. Yeah. Yeah, but th well, they didn't have those devices back then. No. no, and you were expected to conform to school and do everything everyone else was doing. Oh my God, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, um, anyway, if there were mm -hmm. supports where you had almost, you know, they do have job coaches out there, but that's not what you're looking for. You don't no. need somebody to escort you to the right aid and watch you put things on a shelf. Cause I don't do that. That's, that's not. That's I not, mean, if someone wants Sounds like. I was going to say work for the man. Work for the man? Like if someone wants to do all that and they need assistance, that's great. But I want to work for myself. And, and I have like, like my idea of, of work and, 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 and whatever else you want to call it is not 
your typical Mm -hmm. So to find, to hire someone or find someone to say coach her and how to run her own business, I don't think there's someone out there that does that, but they'd gladly bag my, help me bag groceries at the store. Or teach you how to bag groceries. Yeah. What you mean. <clears throat> yeah. So basically what we're saying is there's a big crack in the sidewalk and Mallory falls through like probably many, many, many others. Services do still exist post high school, but it would be for someone who needed a whole lot more assistance and help. It's like adult daycare. Adult daycare. She's right. And we've tried various things. We live in the state of New Jersey. We've tried various programs and they all turn out to be adult daycare. I mean, she came home and said she picked buttons out of a ball of clay. That's not what we're looking for. And then nothing else exists. And then the way the state of New Jersey is, um, DDD, the Depart uh, Department of Developmental Disabilities, they're supposed to be having all kinds of um, services for anybody with any kind of special needs. And basically, the same thing exists there. It's just, you know, functionality. It's just on a, on a much lower plane. And, I bet um, they put a moratorium on a lot of stuff. <clears throat> well... And then other things that you say would help me to become who I'm supposed to be, they don't want to help you with. Yeah, the services that you need, which are all, you know, everything's expensive. Can I get cut off in a minute?